Hey, I'm Anthony Romano and this video is going to tell you the best tips to speed up the keto fat adaption process. So I'm going to try to make this video quick, okay, I'm going to throw a lot at you and deeper descriptions are in my other videos, but I'm trying to make this the best combination of tips in a quick video. So let's get into it, but before we do, if you could like the video and share it to your social media feeds, that's all you can do to help me grow my page. Liking the video makes YouTube show my, my videos to more people and that would help me out greatly. Besides that, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and go to my website, RomanoKeto.com, for programs, consults, coaching, things of that nature. Let's get into it. So, many of you might be familiar with the keto fat adaptation process. So what this means is that your body is getting used to using fats, it's getting used to using ketones, and basically using fat as the primary fuel. There's a lot of benefits with this, which you can learn about in my other videos. But as far as acquiring this, it takes time. In the beginning, you are not going to notice super performance enhancements, okay? In fact, for a lot of people, it's difficult, okay? They often refer to the beginning as the keto flu, but it's really the sugar flu because you're kind of quitting the most addictive substance in the world, which is sugar. And literally, you can look this up. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine. It's more addictive than a lot of other stuff, okay? And your body is designed to use sugar whenever it's available because it's a luxury fuel in nature. It only grows half the year, and your cells are meant to use it whenever it's there. So it's the superseding fuel. Fat is sort of the default primary fuel. So you need to get in touch with this metabolism, this metabolic state of ketosis. One way for starting is exercise more. Now granted, keep in mind, I'm going to gradually make these tips more and more valuable as we get into this video. So the one that's on face value here is exercise more. Why? When you are trying to get keto adapted, you need to train your body to perform in a low blood sugar environment okay this is something that all the best athletes have in common but it's also something that's going to dramatically improve how quickly you adapt because you're burning out your glucose and that's when your body is designed to start using more fats and ketones okay carbs are the fight or flight fuel ketones and fats are the think and outsmart fuel and they naturally come about when you run out of the fight or flight fuel because what the hell else could you do to survive after you fight or flee and it didn't go your way you got to think and outsmart so exercise more burn out your glucose regularly your the actual trigger for entering ketosis is clearing out your liver of its stores of carb so that your liver is like your backup team of carbs so you need to force that glycogen from your liver out force the glycogen lower the glycogen stores in your muscle tissue and basically get used to that in the beginning it's you're not going to have super performance benefits but after a while you'll hit a better homeostasis with you know glycogen and muscles etc and hydration etc so the next tip is high fat keto is good at the start. Keep in mind, keto just means not eating carbs. It does not mean it has to be high fat. That's just the therapeutic version. However, in the beginning, if you go for a higher fat approach, you're going to get more energy coming in. So if somebody is transitioning from a carb metabolism to a fat metabolism, you're going to need enough energy. And also, you might find it a little bit difficult to have a little bit too much more fat than you're used to because your body isn't used to churning through it and doesn't have the enzymes to burn through as much of it. So high fat keto is great at the start because it gets people adapted. It minimizes their blood sugar and by proxy their cravings and stabilizes their insulin more. It's a great way to get adapted. And also, in the first week, I also recommend eating as much food as you want, don't count the calories, as long as it's keto food, so fat and protein and, you know, fibrous vegetables. But that's the other tip to sort of get, use the high fat tool to get you adapted. Now, next tip is focus on carb elimination. Okay, this is one of the biggest things because little blood sugar spikes from the wrong kinds of carbs will delay your adaption. Okay, for the first month or two, which is generally how long it might take you to get adapted, two months at most, one month at least. Actually, if you're very athletic, maybe even two, three weeks. But you need to focus on carb elimination because basically your body is still designed to use sugar whenever it's there. And if your body knows you're just going to give it a blood sugar spike every two weeks, it's just going to delay the processes that it could use ketones for and just say, hey, we're going to get some sugar coming in soon. So just, you know, down regulate all these other functions and whenever sugar comes in, we'll we'll use that. So that's kind of the, the narrative behind it, the personification of it. But overall, focus on carb elimination. And this means no cheats for the beginning. This is the most practical way to implement keto and get adapted quickly because you're minimizing the amount of times your body breaks ketosis. Now, keep in mind, once you're adapted, you do not have to worry about breaking ketosis. You can make the lifestyle work for you and have carb backload, day, carb backload days, targeted keto days, all those things. That's what I do. And I've been doing keto for like nine and a half years. 
So the thing is, after you're adapted, you have the lifestyle accessible to you. But in the beginning, you don't. You have to let keto take the wheel. So focus on carb elimination, no cheats. But this also means no MSG, no aspartame, no artificial sweeteners that are going to trick your brain into getting an excitatory response. So this is something nobody talks about. If you're having Diet Cokes, cut those out because they're probably going to raise your blood sugar. And a lot of people, they do. And even if they don't raise your blood sugar, they're definitely going to raise your brain's excitatory response and make it harder to quit sugar and get adapted and experience the benefits. Things like that can delay the benefits. So the biggest ones are MSG and aspartame. Things like sucralose aren't, and ACE-K aren't really going to raise your blood sugar, but in some people they might, especially if you're insulin resistant. Not the biggest concern with those two sweeteners, but aspartame, MSG, get them out. And they're often hidden in labels, so watch my videos on how to figure that out. Next tip is electrolytes, okay? So you want to supplement with sodium in some way. Sodium, potassium, and you know, if we're getting into luxury territory here, throw in a magnesium. Sodium is salt, okay? But you want to use Celtic salt, pink salt, Himalayan salt, Redmond salt, not table salt, okay? You want to use a good quality salt, and I recommend if people are really needing some crutches here, some training wheels, get a quarter teaspoon of sodium, so salt, and a quarter teaspoon of potassium chloride, not pills, potassium in salt form. I have links down below to these things, and this is a very conservative dose. You take a quarter teaspoon of each every day, and the reason I'm recommending such a low dose is you might not even notice the benefit, you might have to use higher amounts, but I'm just trying not to give you too much at once, because if you have too much at once, you're going to shit yourself, so don't have too much electrolyte at once, don't have too much potassium, because it'll kill you if you have like a whole container of potassium, so don't do that, but a quarter teaspoon of each is a great way to, you know, get a little bit of training wheels on, and you might need a half teaspoon of each, but because you're eating food, I'm recommending a conservative estimate here because you might be getting sodium and potassium from your other food. So look into my other videos on those things and don't overdo it. Now, on that note, other crutches that could help you are exogenous ketone supplements, okay? These are things that come packaged with complete electrolyte products, at least if you go to the ones I've linked down below. And so that will hydrate you. It will prevent your insulin from getting artificially spiked from the absence of sugar and the absence of sodium. And basically, that's going to make you hungrier if you're not getting enough sodium and you're not eating carbs. Your body has, you know, two main ways of retaining water, sodium and carb. And if you're low in one, you want to have a good amount of the other. Too much of both is going to give people hypertension and those issues that people talk about. But salt, if you want to learn more about salt, read The Salt Fix by The Salt Fix by Dr. D. Nicola Antonio. Great book. And also if you're watching this, Dr. D. Nicola Antonio, love your work and hit me up, please. <laughs> so on the topic of other crutches, it's actually a lot more practical though if you were to use Bulletproof Coffee. Not everybody wants to dish out money on exogenous ketone supplements like the ones I got back here, but Bulletproof Coffee is a great way to really ease into ketosis because the MCT oil, and make sure you watch my videos on how to do Bulletproof Coffee properly, and don't ever overdo MCT oil either because that will make you shit yourself also. It's not like these things are routine things. I'm just saying it for the worst case scenario so nobody comes back to me and says they shit themselves, all right? This is not a problem I want to have on my hands. So, not trying not to think of that literally. Bulletproof coffee. It's a great way to ease into ketosis. Great training wheels. Now, that's something that you could use on a regular basis because it's going to make your liver produce more ketones. And you want to get your liver used to making more ketones. So on that note, using other supplements to support the liver is beneficial. I recommend N-acetylcysteine, which is N-A-C. Again, I should have links in the description which is basically going to help detoxify the liver, create more glutathione, recycle more vitamin C, which your kidneys need quite a lot. And essentially, this is going to make producing more ketones more effective. Okay, your liver needs to be exercised just like a muscle. And if it is not used to tapping into ketosis, you're not going to have advanced adaptation benefits. So N-acetylcysteine is again, a luxury supplement to throw in here, but it is something that is going to help, especially with the liver. Now, and I don't know your previous, you know, history of issues so it's a conservative thing that i'm throwing out even for the worst case scenario person here now here's a huge one okay a huge tip here is throw in something to support mitochondrial function so i recommend acetyl l-carnitine you could also use coenzyme q10 you could also use pqq which is pure quinoline quinone basically you can even find those things packaged together pqq or alcar a-l-c-a-r acetyl l-carnitine you could also use regular carnitine L-tartrate, but let me just explain the damn thing here because I'm throwing out a lot of funky words here. Acetyl L-carnitine. Carnitine is necessary for fat oxidation, and it's basically like an ammonia. It, it's a it breaks off of certain vitamins, and it it people will tell you it's an amino acid. Basically, it's a compound that helps you use fat more effectively and actually oxidize more fat. 
if you get it in your day and then do exercise, you're going to milk out more fat loss. But as far as using fats effectively and fat adaptation, you want your mitochondria, the bacteria part of your cell, to work better. So one way to do this is to supplement with acetyl L-carnitine or regular L-carnitine tartrate. But the difference is acetyl L-carnitine can go to your brain a lot easier because acetyl groups can transport past the blood-brain barrier better. Now, this is a huge one because you're going to get better brain function. You're going to get better usage of fats. And I can't say exactly how much a quantity measure it's going to speed up your adaption, but I can tell you, you will feel better and your mitochondria will be using fat more effectively, which is one of the, basically the, the crux of getting fat adapted. You want your mitochondria to use fat better. So that's a great tip. And that's probably the most powerful tip in this video. Alcar, acetyl L-carnitine, it's a great nootropic. It's a natural ingredient. And it's something that's going to benefit your workout performance. L-carnitine tartrate has some other benefits on androgen receptors and muscle building. And I'm going to talk about this in other videos. But acetyl L-carnitine is a powerful supplement. And it's one that I would recommend if you're trying to get into the deep end of fat adaptation. Last thing I'll throw at you here is glutamine supplements. This is for the people who are very, very, you know, finding it difficult to enter ketosis or fat adaption. If you need a glutamine supplement, the reason you would use it is because glutamine can substitute for certain processes in the brain that normally would use sugar. So if somebody is basically creating this sugar complete absence, this withdrawal of sugar, glutamine can help you out in that way. This is something more so where the mental benefits are going to be, you know, instigating the need for glutamine. But overall, glutamine is the most common amino acid in the body. You could probably get it from a good amount of food. It's a luxury item here. I'd place Alcar and NAC is far more important items on the list and probably bulletproof coffee and electrolytes more important with, you know, glutamine and exogenous ketone supplements a little bit farther down the line in terms of how important they are when we're talking budget friendly and practicality measures here. So glutamine is beneficial. I generally only have to use it with clients if somebody is, you know, very heavily addicted to sugar or they are trying to detox from, you know, MSG and aspartame, okay? Those things are excitatory neurotoxins. They jack up your glutamate system and you'll basically benefit by substituting glutamine. The short answer here is, if you're really having a hard time quitting sugar, glutamine. That is it for this video, okay? Thank you for watching it. Share this one. This is tips that nobody else is gonna throw at you because they haven't been doing keto as long or researching it as vigorously as I'm trying to be because I'm trying to be the best source on keto on the world, so and a lot of other things too. But basically, I appreciate your support. Thank you, everybody who's leaving these nice comments, and I'm happy to discuss with you more things in the comments and try to help you out as best as I can. Be excited for the Keto Manifesto. Be excited for the Keto Shred program. And, you know, besides those things, follow my Instagram, follow this YouTube page, and share this video. Anthony Romano, peace.